Hi, I'm Larry Janeski from Dr. Energy Saver. We're looking at a house that is 70 years old, originally a Sears and Roebuck house, and it had an old oil furnace, very inefficient. And we have changed this old oil furnace to a high efficiency heat pump, high efficiency propane furnace back up to that heat pump with high efficiency air conditioning. Let's take a look. All right, well here we are down in the basement and we can see this new uh, HVAC system that we've installed and we just finished it. And what this is, is a high efficiency heat pump with a high efficiency propane backup furnace with high efficiency air conditioning. So let's take a look. A heat pump moves heat from outside to inside. It's an air conditioning system run in reverse. Everyone kind of understands that an air conditioning system moves heat from inside to the outside. So you have a coil or a radiator looking thing inside the ductwork inside and one outside. And it moves that heat from inside to outside. Well, a heat pump works the opposite way. It moves heat from outside to inside. And here we are in a northern climate and some would think, well, gee, uh, there isn't much heat in the outdoor air at, say, 40 degrees or 45 degrees. Well, there actually is enough heat for us to move from outside to inside. And, you know, with a high-efficiency furnace, we can get up to 96% efficient, which is exactly what we have here on the propane furnace backup side. But with a heat pump, we can get up to 300% efficient because we're not creating heat. What we're doing is moving heat. We're moving it from outside to inside. So we can have these very high efficiencies and it makes it more economical to run the high efficiency heat pump, especially at the, with the equipment that we have today in this climate than it does to run the uh, a regular furnace. Now, we have a propane backup. So when the temperature gets down below, in this case, 35 degrees, the system then starts to run on a high efficiency propane backup. And it stops running the heat pump because it's more efficient to run the propane uh, than it is to, to run the heat pump. If we take a look at what we have inside here, we have, uh, we have a coil up inside here, and this is our heat pump coil and our evaporator coil or our cold coil when the air conditioning is running in the summertime. Down here, we have a variable speed blower. Now, a variable speed blower is very important to high efficiency equipment because it um, doesn't run from, from zero to 100% uh, all at once. Uh, if you only need a little bit of heat, it'll run slowly. If you need uh, a lot of heat, it'll run faster. It also ramps up slower and goes down to zero slowly so that it will, for example, when it shuts off, the action of the blower running after the burner shuts off will push all the remaining heat out of the ducts into the rooms that you're trying to heat instead of trapping that heat in the ductwork. Uh, it makes for a more comfortable house because you're not like and then shut off, okay? It ramps up slowly. In addition, uh, we have a two-stage gas valve. So this gas valve will only open uh, part of the way. So we have a little bit of flame in the furnace and the, the blower will be running on a slower speed if let's say we have a 50 or 55 degree uh, outdoor air temperature and we only need a little bit of heat in the house. And then when we need a lot of heat, this gas valve will open fully and the blower will ramp up and ramp up and ramp up faster so we can get a lot of heat into the house. And that will uh, save energy. It's one of the components of high efficiency uh, gas uh, furnace. We have a uh, intake pipe that is PVC and it goes direct to the outside. So this furnace, when it's running, is not drawing combustion air from inside this basement because if it did, like most furnaces and, and boilers and uh, oil equipment, gas equipment, water heaters do, it sucks that air from the basement or the room that it's, it's in for combustion and blows it out the chimney. Well, new makeup air needs to come into the house to replace the air that left because we essentially created a, a vacuum in the basement because we're blowing air out of the basement up the chimney. Where does that air come from? 
the outside. And it comes through any leak that it can get through uh, in the building assembly. And when outdoor air comes inside, well, obviously in the wintertime it's cold, in the summertime it's hot and humid, and we don't really want that because we have to heat and cool, dehumidify that air for it to be comfortable. So the old oil furnace uh, that was in this house, we had an old oil furnace used to exhaust into this chimney. And all that air that went up the chimney had to come in from the outside uh, to replace the air that left. Now we're not even using the chimney. This is our new chimney. And this propane furnace is so efficient at squeezing the heat out of the combustion gases, 96% of that heat is getting to the house. Only 4% of the heat is going outside, out the chimney. And because the exhaust gases are so cool now, we can run them through a PVC pipe. Can you imagine that? This is actually your chimney, and it can go out the sidewall of the house. Another advantage uh, with a regular chimney, we can have a draft up the chimney all the time, even when the equipment is off. With this, we have dedicated air intake, dedicated air outside. We're not connected to the indoor environment. It's much safer and um, much more energy efficient. One of the features of high efficiency equipment as well is a draft inducer. So this is a fan that draws the combustion gases downward. And this is one of the ways that it can squeeze all the heat out of the combustion gases. The combustion takes place up here and it draws those hot gases downward. We know the heat wants to rise, right? So we're forcing that exhaust gas downward through the heat exchanger and getting all the heat out of the uh, combustion gas and then blowing it out outside. Let's take a look outside at the uh, condenser coil and the compressors that we have. This house is 70 years old, never had air conditioning ever, and these homeowners are gonna be really happy with their new air conditioning system. But this is our condenser when we have our air conditioning system running. It's also the other half of our heat pump when we have our, our heat pump running. And uh, one of the features of high efficiency equipment would be a condenser that you'll notice is much bigger. We've all seen these condensers outside of uh, houses and we see them, the little squatty things and uh, they're not very efficient. This one has a lot of surface area um, where the air can uh, gather heat or release heat uh, into the outdoor environment. So this unit has a seasonal energy efficiency ratio, which is how these systems are measured, of 20, which is very, very high. Uh, if your air conditioning system is, say, 12 years old, your seasonal energy efficiency ratio, or SEER rating, S-E-E-R, might be 10 or 8. Uh, if it's not maintained, it has a poor charge, it's dirty, hasn't been cleaned, it could be less than that. So this is going to get these homeowners a lot more uh, cool air or warm air, because it's a heat pump as well, into this house for a lot less electricity. And we can see inside here we have two compressors. And so it's a two-stage unit. So if we only need a little bit of heat or a little bit of uh, cool air when the air conditioning is running, then only one compressor will run. If we need uh, the full shot, 100%, uh, full power Scotty, <laughs> both uh, compressors will run and um, get us the results that we're looking for. But the idea is that a high efficiency system will use as little energy as possible to get us what we need. And since we only pay when electricity is running through our meter or gas or oil is running uh, through our heating system, uh, the less of that we can use, the lower we can uh, draw down our cost of homeownership and our heating and cooling bills. If you have an old heating and air conditioning system and you'd like to upgrade to high efficiency equipment, call Dr. Energy Saver. We'll evaluate your home. Look at the whole house as a system. Identify the priorities because maybe the first priority is not replacing your heating and air conditioning system. Maybe it's air sealing and insulating the house or uh, repairing air sealing and insulating the ductwork. It could be something else. So what we want to do is lower the heating and cooling load in your house before we replace the system. Because if we can lower the load when we do replace the system, not only do we put high efficiency equipment in, but we can make smaller equipment. So you've got the best of both worlds. Uh, call Dr. Energy Saver. We can help you.